Greetings guys, this is Tokrev, and today I'm bringing you a replay of the SU-12244 and I am Pladuna with a few of my friends Boombox043 and Kesperka99 We're playing on a tier 8 matchup in the on the Muravenka map Well, first of all, the SU-12244 is a tier 7 Russian tank, premium tank destroyer while Christmas, I thought, well, I've been, uh, I've been playing the game for a few years now, so I think it is time for my first premium tank. And this tank was on sale at the moment, so I thought, why not buy this tank? It, uh, yeah, is a very special tank because it has some really good, yeah, mobility characteristics, and the gun has a really good rate of fire. So to start off with, this tier seven tank destroyer is capable of dishing out a lot of punishment with its DPM. Its DPM is really what makes this tank special. It has got the 122mm gun, the same one that is mounted on the IS, but the IS reloads around 13 to 11 seconds, while this tank with ventilation and gun rammer reloads in 7... No? Am I, am I wrong? Sorry. 6.75 seconds. That is an extraordinary big rate of fire and this gun has that 390 alpha damage so this dpm is comparable with the stb1 the tier 10 japanese medium tank <laughs> yeah i bet your mouth fell open right there but this tank is also very maneuverable this tank is very light has got really good reverse speed and a really good top speed limit. The only downside is that the tank is not that quickly backwards. Anyway, because this tank is that mobile, that means that this tank does not get that much armor. Although that is not really true because this tank gets 90 millimeters on the front. But as you can see, the front plate is angled very, very well. And that gives you a maximum of 170 to 190 millimeters of armor at the highest parts of the tank. The lower parts of the tank will be a bit more weak. Same for the lower plate. But the side of the tank is not really special. I don't know what the armor value is out of the top of my head. But as you can see the armor is not really much sloped. Same for the rear. Nothing to worry about shooting at this tank. So, if you want to pick up a premium tank, this one fitted my playstyle the best because there are no premium, yeah, best premium tanks in my opinion. You just have to buy a tank that fits your playstyle and this one really does flip my, fit my playstyle. It is really mo mobile, has a great damage output and you will see what is going to happen in this game. And man, what a game this was. Although it's not starting off that spectacular as you can see. I'm just finding my shots trying to put a shot in where I can. But nothing special happening right now. So let's focus a bit more on the game. One of my platoon mates died already unfortunately for me. But Boombox is still alive. He just drove past me there. I was trying to hit the scout tank but didn't hit him of course. Why would I... But anyway, Boombox is trying to defend the base over there and I am going to fight on this flank because I didn't saw any... And I didn't see, sorry that's a grammatical failure, but anyway, I didn't see any point of defending the cap circle there because I wasn't able to put out consistent shots of damage. And right here I can make really good use of the bushes because as many of you will know, the tank destroyers have been nerfed quite significantly in the course of the last patches their view range has been nerfed and of course their camo rating has been nerfed but not the premium tanks the premium tanks have got the same camo rating still so that is what a premium tank destroyer is special now so that makes what that makes the tier uh, fuck's sake that makes these premium tank destroyers even better so also got camo on this tank which should really help I guess. It was on discount so I thought why not put it on the tank. Well anyway T20 there. He's down on the slope. I can't hit him but then I see this Comet here. And I don't want him to flank him so I of course aim my gun directly at him. 
And it seems like that Panther 2 is going to handle that D20 there. But he drives out of the slope and I think, oh, I can make a shot happen. Let's just try it. But the Panther 2 just takes him out before I could, could get a shot on him. And now the Comet drives out. Put a shot into him. Try to not get spotted, but he gets unspotted and well, and I am not longer spotted. So what I want to do, I want to get the ambush shot off on him. Trying to use these bushes right here. But then I think, oh, he's not spotted anymore, so I can go out. But when I leave the bush, the comet gets spotted. I put a good shot into him, and he is dead. The Rheinmetall Borsa gets spotted behind me, but as you can see in the middle of the map, Boombox is in a bit of trouble. He is fighting against a IS-3 and his T-25A, T-25AT, the Tier 7 American Tank Destroyer, which is not very capable of destroying an IS-3, of course. So I'm thinking, okay, let's go up here to try and kill the IS-3, but 175 millimeters of penetration on this gun is... And my, yeah, that is not enough to kill an IS-3 from the front. But if you get really lucky and hit the top of his tank, it will of course penetrate. But now I tell Boombox, pull, pull, pull away, get away. I have a shot on him, but of course it bounces, but I could always try and have a shot. But then the Borsa gets spotted on the left of me. The Panther 2 misses his shot. So I have to go in now and kill this guy as quickly as you can. At the... Sound of the shot, I hear that he is using the 150mm, so I know that he got, has got a really, really long reload time. And that my reload is really quickly, so that I can finish him off. I knew that I could kill this guy before he was able to reload, because of course my rate of fire is really, really high. But now I am going to load a premium shell, because that IS-3 killed Boombox, so the IS-3 is of course now coming my way to kill me. And there he is. I'm not spotted anymore, he's showing his side armor. And I can put a shot into him. I was only loading a premium shot because I had to make sure that that guy died. That guy had to die. And I'm not sure why I am loading premium still. But maybe I wasn't sure of which targets I was going to engage next. I see the TD of the 25 too. I put a shot into him. But then a Hellcat gets spotted behind me. And of course don't want anything to flank me because my tank has no turrets. So if the Hellcat flanks me, I am pretty stuffed. So what I do, I turn my attention back to the Hellcat. And I load AP shells again. Because I just wasted one prem round on the T25 too. Anyway, I'm angling my armor between my shots. So that I have the best chance of bouncing. I bounce two shots. And kill the Hellcat. And proceed to go on and fight. And luckily the Lorraine killed the T25 too. Very well done by him. Otherwise, I would have to turn around and engage that guy as well. But the situation right now, we're being capped. Probably by the Tiger too, because his last spotted location is in the cap circle. So what I have to do now is, of course, go after him. I only have one minute left to reset the cap. But what I am doing here is not very smart because I don't know where the Churchill gun carrier or the M12 are. So I was planned to drive straight through the open here on the other side of the map to drive through the cap circle, towards the cap circle. But that is not smart because I don't know where the other enemy tanks are located yet. So I want to go straight at the base because it only has four, he only needs 40 seconds left to cap the game and we will lose. Lorraine steams in there, goes straight at the base, spots the Tiger 2. Oh my god, and he gets to interrupt, but it cost him his life. And I have loaded a premium round here to make sure that I need to go through this Tiger 2 to kill him. Luckily I just stopped there because the artillery took a shot at me, but now I have to carefully aim and that is something that this gun is not really good at even though I've got a premium shell loaded he bounces luckily for me I bounce but then the Churchill gun carrier gets spotted behind uh, beside me but I've still got my premium shells loaded which is not very smart in my opinion I could have better used these premium rounds to kill 
the Tiger II. But now he's dead, I quickly move forward to avoid the artillery. Luckily I do. But now, the Tiger II knows exactly where I am, so the stupidest thing that I could do now is drive straight at him now. And he would have the killing shot because I don't have enough health left to take one of his shots. So what I have to do now, I am unspotted and I have to... Uh, yeah, come across somewhere else and try to get the Tiger II from another location where he is not expecting me to come from. And that is something that you really need to develop when you uh, learn play World of Tanks. You really need to outthink your opponents because right now the Tiger II was of course thinking that I was going to bomb right at him. But I know that I have no chance whatsoever Yeah, finishing that game with a Top Gun medal and a lot of damage. So what I have to do now, my plan is to sit on this ridge here, activate my binoculars and try to spot the Tiger 2 in the base there to see what he's up to. So I'm doing this right now, but unfortunately there are no bushes here so I can not make use of bushes, but this tank has got a camo bonus so I was willing to take the risk anyway. And there's a tree of course, which always helps. So, standing still here, seeing if I can spot the Tiger 2, don't even need my binoculars to spot him. Because my view range was far enough to try to spot him, but I don't get the spot off, so that means that the Tiger 2 is behind those ridges in the cap circle, and I won't be able to spot him. But, as you can see, there are only 3 minutes left on the clock, and he can also cap out in less than a minute so what my plan is is to go in there and I have to kill him and take the risk I have to take the risk in my opinion because I am not able to take long range shots at him to kill him so I have to go straight at him to kill him that's the only thing I can do now there he is I turn the tank and I shoot right through his upper plate one thing that I need to mention here quickly is that the Tiger 2 has got a really strong upper armor plate of 150 millimeters but because I was driving yeah from there the angle got decreased because I was shooting down on this upper plate so the angle of his upper plate got decreased and that made me able to penetrate his upper plate which normally never would have penetrated if I was standing straight at the Tiger 2 well now this is a great game so far I've managed to do 3650 damage in this game already and mentioning that I yeah, hadn't done really that much after the first few minutes of the game but now I need to find this artillery and as you can see he is a good player so what I have to do I was trying to search a bush here and try to activate my binoculars but one of my friends reminded me that there is only two minutes left on the game and then my teammate also uh, helps me again because he says the spawn location of the enemy is far more to the east of this map. So it will be more likely that the enemy RT will of course be in this range here. So steaming towards this area you can really see the great mobility of this thing coming in handy right now. So what I have to do... It is pretty risky because the artillery can of course splash me and kill me without any problem whatsoever. He only has to hit anywhere near me to kill him because those American tanks have got a really high splash radius in their SPG line. And he is not a silly player so I really have to think about how I am going to make this engagement. But I was also worried about if I was going to catch the M12 because if the M12 was trying to run away from me I would never catch him in one minute before the game will end so I think oh god he's ran away so I tried to steam off after him but then luckily he gets spotted there I have to take a clutch shot I miss but luckily he also misses and this gives me all the time that I need to finish off the last enemy with 46 or 47 seconds on the clock remaining. What a great game for this tank. In this game we picked up a ace tanker badge because I did 4000 damage. I got 3030 experience and collected 70,700 credits. 
I picked up a Fire for Effect, a Duelist and a Bruiser token and collected a Defender medal, a High Caliber medal and a Top Gun medal for killing 6 enemy tanks. Having a look at the team score, so now I did 4001 damage in total, got 6 kills and got 1015 base experience which is of course a lot for a tier 7 tank destroyer. And I finished top 1 damage by far on both teams. I fired 18 shots of which 15 hit and 13 penetrated. I received 5 hits of which 2 penetrated and bounced 3, blocking 550 damage by my armor. In this game I traveled 5.3 kilometers to achieve this kind of result in my tier 7 Russian premium tank destroyer. And as you can see I picked up a really healthy amount of credits but because the ammunition in this tank is that expensive this tank is not the most reliable to pick up that many credits when you're having a super carry game. But guys, while I was playing that game, I was of course trying to complete one of my missions. And the mission that was trying to complete in that game that I just showed you was the Tank Destroyer 15 mission. And that is one of the hardest ones to complete. You have to cause at least 4000 HP of damage to enemy vehicles. And on the secondary objecti objective is destroy an enemy vehicle. And because I did 4001 damage, I completed this mission and I can finally claim my reward of which is the second female crew member that I ever got. So what would be nicer to record this and put this in the video as well. So we are going to claim a female crew member. I want to put her into my T-54. Vehicles selected. T54. Where are you? Oh, I can scroll now. The T54. And what do I want her to be? Let me quickly check because I already have one female crew member here in the T54. I've got a commander here. So let's make her the gunner. The gunner of the T54. Let's place her in there. Select next missions. And so guys, here is my second female crew member. I am curious where she went now. There she is. I think this is her. Yeah, this, this is a female. <laughs> no doubt this is a female. Anyway, as you can see what's special about the female crew members is that they will automatically get a sort of brothers in arms yeah, perk. This is called Sisterhood of Steel. You will get this for free and you will always get one skill for free as well so what is really nice here I don't have to yeah use one perk of these on uh, on the uh, brothers in arms skill so that I can have six cents at once and which is really nice of course but I won't put in the perks in this video but anyway I hope you liked this video this was a great game that occurred when I had some really bad games before but that doesn't really matter I am really happy because this was also the first of the ace tanker medal for my SU-12244 before this I was only able to get the second class medal even when I got 3660 damage in a lost so the curse was keeping on for quite some time but now finally I managed to ace it a well deserved ace tanker with a well deserved female crew member by completing the, all the missions for the Stuk 4 with all my tank destroyers and I thought this was going to take quite a while because 4000 damage in my highest tier tank destroyer tier 7 is pretty damn hard so this was a great game for my tier 7 tank destroyer and if you enjoyed this video please leave a like because I did put a lot of time in making this video also consider subscribing if you like to see this video and want to see more of my content. Of course you can check out more of my videos on my channel. I've got montages on my channel. I've got more of these bomb it around videos. And I will hopefully see you in the next video. Bye guys.